Hi again, welcome back to ingvid.com. I'm Adam. Today's lesson is grammar and actually I had quite a few requests for this lesson because these seem to give people a lot of trouble, especially in writing, okay? Compound adjectives. Firstly, what is a compound adjective? Mostly you'll notice a compound adjective has the hyphen in it, right? It's a two or three part, two or three word adjective that together acts as one word, okay? That's very important to remember. It may have one word, I mean, it may have two words, it may have three words connected by a hyphen, but they work all together like one word, one adjective word. Okay, let's look at a few examples before we get into the details of how to construct these. I heard a girl speaking English. I have an English speaking friend. Now, what's the difference between these two? I heard a girl who was speaking English. Or I heard a girl with a gerund. So this could be a participle, this could be a gerund. It doesn't matter, it comes after the girl and this is what she is doing, okay? I have an English speaking friend. Now, I can change this sentence and say, I have a friend who speaks English. But it's much easier just to say an adjective about the friend. Now, it's very important to remember, an adjective, uh, sorry, a compound adjective comes before a noun. And it always comes before a noun, never after it. If it comes after it, it's no longer a compound adjective. There's no more need for the hyphen, okay? Let's look at more examples. A strong healing lotion or a fast healing cut. Now, even though it's a fast healing cut, I would still want to use a strong healing lotion. What's the difference here? Here, first of all, you notice the comma. I have two adjectives. It's a strong lotion. It's a healing lotion. These are two separate ideas about this noun, okay? They're not joined together. Each one affects the lotion. Here, fast healing lotion, it's fast and it's heal uh, a fast healing cut, sorry. It's fast and it's healing about this cut. <clears throat> so for example, you go to the doctor and he needs to remove a mole. You have like a little thing growing on your arm. So he cuts it. But he, he's a specialist, he's very professional, it's a very fast healing cut. In two days, you won't even know there was a cut there, right? So both these words, this is an adverb, okay, this is a, a participle, both work as one word about cut. Now, you don't really need to worry about this, but just in case you're interested, if you're writing and you have a word count, for example, IELTS or TOEFL, you have to write 250 words or 350 words respectively, this is one word not two words. Remember that, okay? Next, a man eating lion. Now, I don't know if people actually eat lions. I don't know how they would taste. I'm sure they're kind of gamey, needs a little bit strong taste. But I saw a man eating lion. So this man was eating that lion. But then I saw a man eating lion eat the man. How does that work? A man-eating lion. So this is a compound clause describes the lion. A lion who eats people. Okay? Very different meaning. So now you're saying, okay, well, where do I put the adjective? Uh, where do I put the compound adjective? Like before, after, not at all, with the hyphen, without the hyphen? So this is what we're going to look at next. But before we do that, this is where people make the most mistakes in writing, especially English learners, okay? My nephew is 10 years old, okay, with the S, no hyphens, after the noun, after the B verb, but I have a 10 year old nephew, no S, and two hyphens, and they come before the noun nephew. Now it doesn't matter if you put the number 10 or if you write the word 10, if you're using it as a compound adjective, before the noun, then you have the hyphens, you don't have the S. But let's look at more specific details to know how to use and what sort of words we can combine to make a compound adjective. Okay, so let's see how we construct compound adjectives. There's a few ways to construct them. We're going to look at two, we're going to look at a few more after that. 
First of all, you can begin by using an actual adjective or an adverb plus a participle. Again, two types of participles, ing, like talking or looking, or there's the past participle, which is ed or an irregular verb, however that ends, right? Oh, sorry, my mistake here. There you go. Known or eyed. We'll talk about that eyed in a second. So, what you do, you join the adjective or the adverb plus the hyphen, plus the participle. So a fast talking, like a fast talking salesman. He knows exactly what to say, he talks fast, you can't keep up, he, you don't understand what he's saying. Next thing you know, you're signing for a brand new car, you don't even know what you paid. He's a fast talking salesman. Good looking, a good looking girl, a good looking boy, etc. Blue eyed, somebody who has blue eyes, you can say a blue eyed man, a blue eyed woman, a blue eyed child. Well known. A well-known professor. Now, again, very, very important to remember, all of these would come before the noun. So, she is a good-looking girl. She is good-looking. They mean the same. The two sentences mean exactly the same way, but mean exactly the same thing, but different structure. Okay, sorry, I just realized another one. Participle. Okay, participle. So, this is the participle, this is the participle, but after the verb, no hyphen, before the verb, hyphen, both of these about the noun. Now, I talked about blue-eyed. Now you're thinking, I is not a verb. I mean, it is a verb. You can eye something, means you can see it and want it, but in this case, it just means to have something. So body parts, for some reason, we can turn into participles. Hair, a uh, dark-haired woman, uh, brown-eyed boy, uh, long-nosed man, a uh, thick-lipped woman, a wide-bodied truck. Doesn't have to be about a person, actually. We can use body for many things, but you can say, uh, you can also say bone, like, Sometimes people say, like for heavy people, we say big boned. Not a very nice thing to say, but people say it. Just so you know, and there's other verbs, that, but I'm not going to talk about those today. They don't have anything to do with this lesson. So body parts, you can turn into participles, add an adjective, and you have a compound adjective. Now, you can also use a noun plus a participle to create a compound adjective, okay? Sun-dried tomatoes. These are very delicious. You put them on your pasta, whatever you do. A blood-sucking leech. Now, I'm not sure if you know what a leech is. A leech is a very, very tiny little worm that it comes onto your body, like usually in a tropical place, humid, lots of water, standing water. It'll crawl up. You won't even know it's there. It'll start sucking your blood, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes it could get this big, full of your blood. And they're very hard to get off. They, they like to stick. But they are blood-sucking leeches. Okay? So this, we have blood. We have the participle sucking about the leech. What, this is what they do. Now, uh, let's say Beyonce, I don't know, whoever you like, releases a new album and they have, she has record-breaking sales. Huge sales. The records, the, the most sales by an artist, broke them. But again, this, an adjective for that. Okay, we have ad adjectives, adverbs, and participles. We have nouns and participles. Let's look at a few more. Okay, last few examples to look at. Very important to remember, when you're using numbers, numbers plus nouns to describe another noun, although there's no adjective involved here, although technically numbers are adjectives, but the whole thing becomes an adjective to that noun, okay? So, a 10-story building. So across the street, they're building a 10-story building. Okay, they're putting up a 10-story building. So notice, they have 10. Even if you write the word 10, it doesn't matter. It's still a number plus a, a noun that together are, an, are used as an adjective for the building, for the other noun. So make sure you have the dash. But if you talk about the building and you talk about how many stories it has, and you put it after the building, then that building has 10 stories with the S, okay? 
That building has 10 stories. Just remember, add the S after the noun with the hyphen, no S. Your teacher in university, and this is very common, so when you get to university, be prepared to write 10 page essays. Not 10 pages essays, 10 page essays. You can put a one page, uh, sorry, a one 10 page essay or 10 page essays. Again, if you put it after, the essay needs to be 10 pages. We already spoke about this 10 year old boy, a boy who is 10 years old. Now, you know, you'll also notice I said, you will have to write, let's say I'm the professor, you're joining my course. Over the whole year, you will have to write five 10 page essays. So don't worry about this number. This is it's a different five essays, 10 pages each. So five 10 page essays, okay? And again, when you're speaking, you will have to make that pause on the comma. In writing, it's obvious, it's clear. Last one. When you have number plus measure, or uh, time, or any other measure. So I have to work an eight hour shift today. An eight hour is an adjective for the type of shift. Eight hour. Any other measure, like you're talking about feet, you're talking about pounds, you're talking about ounces, you're talking about liters. It doesn't matter what the unit of measure is. If you're putting a number before it, and the number plus the measure describe the noun, make sure you have your hyphen, and again, not five feet wall, five foot wall. That wall is five feet high. It is a five foot high wall. And if you want to put the high, you don't need to, but if you want to, then you got a three word compound adjective. You have two hyphens, okay? Same story applies for plural before or after. This is an irregular plural, one foot, two feet. Doesn't matter, same rule applies after the noun, feet. Before the noun, foot. Now, if you have any questions about compound adjectives, please feel free to ask me on ingvid.com in the comment section under the quiz. Of course, take the quiz and practice all of this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, cha YouTube channel. Sorry, see you again soon, bye.